This is Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing. You are watching Sporting Icons. You don't need to be anywhere else. It's Monday, the kids are back at school and unfortunately the parents are back in work. Joy of joys. Either way, I hope you're having a great day and you do have a great day, of course. Now, unless of course you've been living under some kind of rock lately, you'll know that Anthony Joshua's next fight will be of course against Alexander Povetkin, which of course is his mandatory, he has no choice but to fight Povetkin. Alexander Povetkin, for me, has the best resume at heavyweight as of today. Um, it's an absolutely stellar resume with his only loss against Vladimir Klitschko, where Vladimir Klitschko mauled him throughout the whole fight. It went to decision, and this was in Russia, and Povetkin lost that fight on points, of course. But Vladimir Klitschko, if you haven't seen that fight, was all over him, as in he was leaning all over him, he was throwing him around, he'd get him in arm locks and swing him around the ring, all that kind of thing. Klitschko is very lucky not to be disqualified in that fight, let's be honest. Povetkin has a... Bit of a reputation now as a PED cheat, justifiably in some ways, unjustifiably in other ways. Because when people think of him doing the PEDs, people automatically think his cancelled fight against Deontay Wilder. Um, but he was innocent in that one. Okay, he did have something in his system, but he was within the legal limit, and that fight should have went ahead. So of course, when people think of Povetkin as a PED cheat, it's not actually that. Okay, he's a one time, one time too many, you know, let's not get it wrong, but it was against Bermain Stiverne. So when he was um, scheduled to fight Bermain Stiverne for the mandatory again, he popped dirty. So, but of course he still had a fight with Yuan Duapa and wiped the floor with him anyway. So he was still allowed to fight, which is a bit weird. But anyway, um, so if anybody who's thinking that he's a PED cheat, it's not for the wilder situation. He countersued, he won that one, he was deemed innocent. That fight should have happened. But of course, Wilder ducked that fight, he ran away. That's a fact of it, this isn't a rumor. Okay, now, Varda will be used against um, Joshua. Um, so Varda will be employed, all that kind of stuff, but it has to be anyway. So it's not like Joshua is bringing in Varda on purpose to test Povetkin. So again, some people who think that, that maybe that's what's happening, that's not what's happening. As WBA champion of all weight classes, Varda is a necessity. It has to happen. Okay, there's no way out of it. If you are WBA champion, every fight that you have, you are rigorously tested by Varda. But of course, Joshua being UK, a British fighter, he's also tested by UCAD plus multiple other ones as well. And Povetkin will have to go through all this as well. The fight's going to be happening in September in the UK. So Povetkin's going to have to be tested by UCAD, right? And whoever else. So Eddie Hearn has said that he doesn't really want Joshua taking on Povetkin because it's a stupidly dangerous fight. Now, he's right, it is. There's no doubt about it. It really is a dangerous fight. Um, as I said, Povetkin has the best resume at heavyweight. He's very, very good with both hands. Very heavy-handed. Not the tallest guy in the world. And for me, I think this is pretty much where Eddie Hearn's getting it from. Where Joshua, he likes the tall guys. So he likes the likes of Charles Martin and Dominic Brazil. He likes these kind of guys, Vladimir Klitschko. Um, because he finds the range so much easier, which is why I always said that him fighting Wilder is perfect for Joshua and he'll wipe him out, Charles Martin 2.0 style, okay? And he seems to, I don't want to say struggle against the shorter guys, but he doesn't perform that well. His knockout isn't really there. It's, it's almost like he's a little bit reluctant to throw the big right hand. He doesn't really like it when the shorter guys, they tuck in and they get on his chest, and start throwing bombs at his body. He doesn't like that. And that's why against Takam, while he was winning every single round, of course, but it wasn't a pretty fight to watch, much like against Joseph Parker, and I'm gonna probably hazard a guess, it's gonna be very similar with Povetkin. I think Joshua's gonna have to be in his A game because Povetkin's very, very skillful, but Joshua's gonna have to keep him away from his chest, not let him get in on the inside, keep him away with a jab and just win the rounds. I'm not too sure if he's going to stop Povetkin, to be honest, because of the height thing. That's all it is. Um, but of course he can. David Price, he rocked Povetkin, of course, after David Price had already been knocked down by Povetkin. He did catch Povetkin with a very decent shot, which stumbled Povetkin right the way back to the corner. Um, for me, I'm not too sure if he was really a knockdown, but the referee deemed it as a knockdown. Um, the ropes did kind of save him, I suppose but he got a standing eight count. But of course, he did come back and caught David Price with a peach of a right shot, which stunned 
David Price to his boots and Povetkin just followed through with a wicked left hook, put out David Price cold. Now, against Joshua, Joshua is not one of those kind of guys where, like David Price, you see David Price would put his hands up and let Povetkin tee off on him and then he'd try and counter back all that kind of thing. That's not Joshua's way. Joshua will move. He's a better mover than what people think as in on his feet. Um, he's a very, very good counter puncher, but Povetkin has speed. He has slowed down a little bit on whether it's age or has some may say lack of PEDs, who knows. Um, as I said, look to this Deverne fight, not the Wilder fight one as to where the PEDs come from. So it is dangerous, but why Eddie Hearn would say he doesn't want him to fight him, for anybody who follows boxing and you know about Povetkin and you know about all fighters, rather than just outside Anthony Joshua, we already know this, right? Of course we do. Um, unless you're a real Joshua hater, then of course you're going to say that he should wipe out Povetkin, and Povetkin's old, Povetkin's crap, blah, 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 all that kind of thing. But Eddie Hearn is saying this because Anthony Joshua's, the majority of, of his fan base are a casual audience. And nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Why not? Um, it seems that um, a lot of people just follow Joshua and they don't know too much about all the other heavyweights, they kind of learn about the other heavyweights when Joshua fights them. And this is pretty much it for Povetkin. So he's saying this, that to sell the fight, that Povetkin is dangerous. He's very, very dangerous. Because obviously there's a lot of people who can be disappointed that Undisputed didn't happen. So this is a way of still drawing in the audience, still putting some bums on seats at wherever it may be. I don't know whether it's going to be at Wembley, whether it's going to be at Cardiff, or it's going to be at Old Trafford, or wherever it may be. And of course, pay-per-view as well. So yeah, that's why he said that he doesn't really want Povetkin fighting Anthony Joshua, because it is a dangerous fight. It's a very serious dangerous fight. But he's saying it purely for the casual audience who maybe don't know Povetkin, but... Of course, the casual audience who was watching Joshua's last fight against uh, Parker, if you watched the undercard, you'd have seen him fight David Price. So you kind of know who Povetkin is, right? But either way, that's, for me, that's why he said it. And it's a great, great fight. Uh, for me, Povetkin is a much, much tougher fight for him than what it would have been for the Undisputed. But this is the situation that he's in. He has no choice but to fight, fight Povetkin or give up the title. Um, they've already signed, they've already agreed everything. It's now literally just securing the date. Once the date is secured for September, then they will announce the fight. Could be today, could be tomorrow. Expect it very, very soon. Uh, but for me, I do know that they already have an agreed contract. They have agreed all terms. Everything is set, everything is signed, sealed, and virtually delivered. Just waiting on some final details. And then, of course, it will be sorted out it will be publicly arranged publicly announced even but anyway drop your thoughts below what do you make of eddie hearn's statement do you think that him coming out saying that alexander povetkin he doesn't really want joshua fighting him this is just a selling tool for me that's exactly what it is and he is right i'm not going to say he's not he is right but again this was aimed at the casual audience for those who don't know who povetkin is rather than people go well who's povetkin they've heard of him he must be crap no, he's not crap. He's stellar. He's proper dangerous. And it's a fight that I'm going to be nervous for Joshua in this one. Straight up, I'm, I am going to be nervous for him. I do believe Joshua will beat him. I believe it's going to be an ugly fight. I don't think that Povetkin is going to make the same mistakes he did against Vladimir Klitschko or any other kind of fight where he gets tagged quite a lot. Because out of all the people that Povetkin's fought, I'll probably imagine that Joshua may have the most power out of them. Maybe with the exception of Klitschko, maybe. But again, Klitschko wasn't really using his power too much. He was just using his size, where he would just overpower Povetkin, put his weight down Povetkin, tire him out. Maybe this is going to be the same kind of tactics that Josh is going to be using. Don't know, but he, need, he does need to be careful because I know he can get away with a certain amount in the British ring. Certain things he can't. And here in Britain, while of course we want Joshua to win, we want all our British fighters to win, we do call it as we see it. If we think that Joshua was cheating, we'll say Joshua was cheating. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think that Joshua is going to wait for the counter punch and try and knock him out. Um, he hasn't knocked out his last couple of opponents. Um, being Takam, of course, the referee stepped in too early, maybe, potentially, who knows. But um, even Joshua said that he wasn't happy that the referee stepped in. But he was always going to win. But 
anyway, and of course against Joseph Parker, where he just didn't really let the right hand go. That was because Parker was very quick on his feet. Povetkin is very quick on his feet, very good at finding the range, but he's not as quick as Parker, so maybe he should catch him quite or a bit easier, but who knows? It's a very exciting fight. I'm looking forward to it. And I said, I will be nervous for Joshua, but anyway, drop your thoughts below about Eddie Hearn's statement. Click that thumbs up, subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.